before the pandemic happened, he was probably about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Came back 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Now, your alignment. Also, us training him at receiver made him more of a skilled lineman. I wanted my kids to go to IMG. I got kids going to IMG now. I wanted kids to be able to, you know, be in front of magazines. I had a kid that was in front of Sports Illustrated magazine. They attack their goals, I attack mine. You know, everything that I've said that I wanted for them came true. I do my part, they do their part. I say that all the time to them. I'm gonna do my part, you do your part, and I can get you there. The Lace Facts Dream Team is a 14U team, 8th grade team. We travel around the country and play some of the top teams and just prepare these kids for high school. I think the big thing that makes these kids special is their personalities. These kids are super humble. Uh, they call me, hey Mike, I want to train. You know, I rarely have to reach out to them. We just finished playing the game on Saturday. In Oakland, you know, it was um, a very competitive game. You know, a lot of these kids haven't played last year uh, due to the pandemic. But the game got competitive as we start to, you know, open up the score and things escalated. You know, the kids end up getting into it. The goal is not just to win football games, it's to create, you know, great athletes in the future and better young men. Well, after the Oakland, um, I will call it, um, scuffle. They were kind of down because they only played two quarters. I felt like going out there and that ended up happening was more so a, um, not a loss, but a lesson for these kids. People to understand that, you know, when you're in high school, if this happens, you might not just, you know, lose a quarter, you might lose your season. Right now you're at Pop Warner, it's a development year, but if you don't learn from this and your mistakes, high school, you might not play. Um, Coach Mike is like a big brother. He puts us through a lot of life challenges, and I think he does, he just wants us to be good men, not just good men in football, but good men. Kasani Giles um, is a player that you can rely on um, offensively uh, for deep balls, um, and something that you don't talk about well uh, a lot um, is blocking. You know, a lot of receivers catch touchdowns, they run the ball good, but they don't block well. Kasani is a guy that can catch can run, but blocks phenomenal. And he takes pride in helping his um, you know, teammates get into the end zone. Before I came to the dream team, I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't developed. I just had a raw talent, but when I came to the dream team, they got me more developed. They got me better than I uh, left my whole team. And I just became a better overall player because they care for the player rather than just the team. Zach is a, is a great football player, you know, mentally he's a strong football player, he's super aggressive, uh, he plays defensive back, right now he has about two interceptions, a uh, few touchdowns on offense, but he prides himself on locking dudes down, you know, so I like Zach um, and, and love what he brings to the table as a leader on this team. They push me to be like the best athlete I could be. Uh, Pepe is one of our leaders on the line. Uh, he's a big guy at 6'5", uh, 265, two, dang near 270. Um, you know, fast football player, but also, you know, leads on up front. You know, and when you're a, a football team, you don't need just leaders in the backfield. You need leaders on the line to make sure everybody is uh, physically ready and prepared and in their right gaps and firing off the ball. And he's a guy that brings that to the table on the offense and defense side. This team has uh, helped me um, get better in like every aspect of my game. It's very important to build a community. I mean, like they like they say, you know, it takes a village. You know, and when you have a village and a group of people uh, that all have common interests, you know, anything is possible. And that's what we've been able to create, uh, and put together, and we're going to continue to grow and and you know, make the next big time players in the NFL. Five years from now, I can tell you what I did to help them, but as of right now, I'm in the process. I have an end goal for everybody. Um, and I talk to all the parents and I talk to the kids and let you know, the end goal, of course, is college. If you go further than that to the NFL, it's a blessing. Um, of course, nobody can predict what, if a kid can go but we can prepare them for opportunity to go. So the fact that we've been um, 
to college and we've been away from our parents and families, we know what comes with that. So we help them understand that early so when they go and they're in that situation, they don't fall for the trap. I want to play at the highest level. You just can't be complacent and that's what it, that's what um, this season has taught us as a team. My goal as a football player is to leave a mark when I'm playing Playing at the highest level and providing for my family. The kids that, you know, played are all walking into high school with scholarship offers. A lot of the kids that are on the team are going to some of the biggest high schools on scholarship. I think all the kids did what I expected and beyond. My goal for next season is to start as a freshman, be productive on the field while playing against varsity players. To be a great person on and off the field. Getting better and getting to like um, understand how high school football works. And also I want to earn uh, more scholarships. Um, I think the biggest person that grew this year was uh, Pepe. The year that we played before the pandemic happened, he was probably about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, came back 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Now he has to play the line, you know? It's funny, I used to tell him, like, like what position you wanna play? I wanna play receiver. And I'm like, okay, you're not the same kid at 12, you know, now you're a lineman, you know? so. Him understanding that and understanding that playing this position is gonna open up more doors for him, benefited him, but also us training him at receiver made him more of a skilled lineman, you know, cause you don't see linemen that, you know, can play um, receiver if they wanted to and, you know, play both sides of the ball and they can actually run, you know. Um, he's definitely somebody special and seeing him move from a traditional skill to, you know, alignment this year for the first time, it was something that I, and they feel like, oh man, I don't want to change my position. I kind of like go through the past drafts and say, well, this lineman was your size right now. You're an eighth grader and he was your size and he went first round. Let me try to find a receiver at 6'5", 6'6", 270. Can't find one, you know, so. Those are different things that I try to show and I say, okay, receivers run these type of times. You run this time, okay, well, linemen run this time. Okay, you're fast from a lot of linemen that are in the NFL right now. So it puts him in a situation where you're like, okay, I have the advantage. These kids play all year, so it's big that the balance of them having fun and being a kid is in, in, in the mix of the journey of being a successful player. Like, you want them to have fun. You want to create memorable experiences that they can talk about, you know. We want to create something where they can just chill and not think about this game. They could just be kids. With hard work, anything is possible. Dream team on me, dream team on three. Wait, 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 wait. Ready? Dream team on me, dream team on three. One, two, three. Dream team! How's it going to feel? Hey, jog off, jog off, jog off.